Bad weather, it's the bane of a lot of photographers. You look out the window and you just kind of think, well, what am I gonna to do today with a cloud and the weather as it is, it's raining or it was raining earlier. And you'd think, well, I don't know. Can you do anything in bad weather? You can, let me explain. Let me give you seven different things you should think about when it comes to taking bad weather photography. One of the first things that you should think about is carrying an umbrella with you. I do have an umbrella with me. It's actually in the car. The car's only like a 30 second walk from where it is that I am. Thankfully, at the moment, it's not raining. But on the journey here, it was raining heavily. So at some point, this place is likely to be subject to a downpour. So it seems obvious, but if you're going to go out in bad weather, just take an umbrella with you. It's going to save you a lot of problems. The next thing that you should be thinking about is your gear. And you might be thinking, well, what do I really need to think about? I've got a camera bag, it's got a rain cover. Yeah, but is your camera actually weather sealed? So for example, the Canon 5D Mark IV is weather sealed along with the majority of the lenses that I carry. Now I say majority, if you follow me a lot, you'll know that I use a Canon tilt shift. That's not, as far as I understand, weather sealed because of the mechanisms that work it, you're shifting the lens up and so therefore the lens is coming apart. Same with the tilt on the front. The other thing you can think about is a rain cover. So I bought this rain cover a long time ago. This is by Optech USA. Not sure if they still exist or not. It cost me, must have been at the time, maybe five, ten pounds for that. It's almost like a huge kind of plastic bag that sits over the front of your camera. So yes, you can carry a plastic bag. The other thing that I've done it a long time ago is I had an old, in the car I had a, a cool bag, which between rain showers up in, when I was in the Highlands of Scotland, I wanted a shot down Glen Shiel. I put the cool bag over the top of the camera to pr completely protect it. And then when the rain stopped, lifted it up and then got a moody shot looking down Glen Shiel. So do you think about all sorts of different ways you might be able to protect your camera against the elements. And then if you're out and you've got your umbrella up and the rain's tipping it down, at least there's something over the top of it that will help protect it as much as possible. The next thing you really should have in your equipment, and I know some people might say, again, well, you know, I'm a photographer, I've got a tripod, is a decent tripod, a tripod that is able to withstand the elements that you can get hold of it and get your camera on it, because at times you might be dealing with high winds, and if the more stability you can get with your camera, the better chance you are of getting a decent shot. I've been all over the place and been in all different sorts of weathers and been able to work in different sorts of weather, not always using a tripod, I will grant you that, but a lot of the time my camera, it is on a tripod and it's much better to, to invest in a good solid tripod that when you've got your camera on it, it's less likely to be moving around or if there is some wind, you can at least push the camera down from the top and create a better sense, center of gravity to actually get your camera in place and to be able to get the shots that you want. The next thing you should think about when you're out and about in inclement weather such as today where although it's not raining it's probably going to be raining in the next hour or so carry a microfiber cloth with you now yesterday i did actually pick up a couple of microfiber cloths from my optician vision plus and sancia siloa so thanks to them for, for giving me a couple of microfiber cloths to keep in my bag but keep a microfiber cloth in your bag because at least if there's some specks of rain here and there you can get them off the front of your lens with this cloth. Now, what you do have to remember with microfiber cloths is that they get saturated pretty quick. So if you're in a downpour, well, basically think again as to what it is you should be doing, but definitely keep a microfiber cloth in your camera bag. It will help you a lot if you've just got some specks of rain here and there that at least you can be getting them off the front element of your lens and be getting the shots that you want without any smears of water and rain droplets. The fifth thing that you need to think about is your subject. Think about what it is that you're going to be photographing because certain subjects will work a lot better in inclement weather. So for example, the coastline, or here I'm in this old cemetery with a, a ruined church behind me. It looks beautiful. For those of you in the United Kingdom, a great place to go to in the south 
is Corfe Castle. Not necessarily the hill that overlooks Corfe Castle, but there's a cemetery in the village of Corfe Castle that's worth going to because at least there you get something moody and then you've got the backdrop of a castle as well. So really think about the subject you're doing. Coastline as well is somewhere that can be amazing if you've got inclement weather. Of course you have to, to watch yourself, you have to be aware of your safety. And a few years ago, I don't know if I can find the image to actually flick up, I think I can, but I took some really nice moody shots on the Dorset coastline around Bat's Head near to Dirtle Door and I think Dirtle Door as well. And I did them in a high ISO just to sort of give it a little bit more, um, just a little bit more atmosphere. I kind of wish maybe I should have taken them um, a lot lower, a lot lower ISO. I took them around, I think 1600, something like that, just to add a bit of grain, just to add some mood. But um, yeah, do, do really think about your subject. And again, mountains, for example, mountains work extremely well in moody light. Now, obviously, if it's tipping down with rain and you can't see the mountains, then that's never going to be uh, that's never going to be any good. But for example, when I was in Patagonia this time, actually this time last year, a year ago this year, I was in Patagonia. Beautiful mountain landscapes. However, it wasn't the most amazing weather. But for the mountains and the mood that was created with a cloud up in the sky, it looked absolutely sensational, absolutely beautiful light that was there that when it was coming through, coupled with the cloud structure. So do you think about that? Do you think about the subject that you want to photograph? Because it will make a huge difference if you're wanting to get out there in inclement weather and, and have some really nice moody atmospheric shots. Now, if it happens to be raining, and I know today it's going to be raining, looking at the weather forecast, is actually why I came out. I thought maybe when I was here it's going to be raining. Now, keep an eye on the direction of that rain. See, before you get out of the car, what the direction of the rain is. So you think, OK, there's my subject here, or here, let's say, for example, you've got the rain coming in this way, you're photographing this way, well then the rain's going to be soaking your camera. But if your subject's here, you're here, and the rain's coming from behind you, it's not so much of an issue. So do bear that in mind. Yes, you might have chosen a, a great and a, an amazing subject to get out there and photograph, but if the rain's coming from the wrong direction, you're going to be struggling, really struggling to get what it is that you want. So do think about that. There's all sorts of things that you can be thinking about, as I've shown already, before you get out there in weather like it is today. The last thing that I want you to think about is cloud structure. Now for me, if you follow me a lot, you will know that if I happen to be out and the weather does what it's doing today, what I prefer, what I absolutely prefer to have is some kind of structure and form to the cloud. If you look at the church that's behind me there, the ruined church, you will see there is form to the cloud. It's not a flat gray sky. That I absolutely detest and I just loathe when the weather is like that because it's just as boring as anything. However, when you've got cloud structure like this, sometimes what happens is, and it happens every so often, the sun is just up there at the moment, you get the sun piercing through the cloud and therefore illuminating your subject. I can think of a, an image right now that I did in Patagonia this time last year, being on the back of the boat, going down the, the Beagle Channel into the Glacier Alley and seeing this beautiful mountains around me and there was a little bit of break in the cloud and then you add in the light that falls on the mountains it just makes the picture it looks amazing and I do like looking back at that picture but here I specifically chose this place today because I could see from where I lived that the uh, the cloud structure was good so I came out here as quick as I could to photograph this I really wanted to get this and as we speak I did say it was going to rain it's starting to rain so there you go working out here in bad weather, but I've got a subject that really, for me, does suit the bad weather. A beautiful day for doing bad weather photography. So there you go, there's some tips. Hope you've liked it. If you have enjoyed it, don't forget to subscribe down there. Click on the notification bell up there for all the stuff that I'm uploading, which is once a week on a Friday, it seems to be, and I can easily get my stuff out now. So uh, until the next time, see you again soon, folks. Stay safe and uh, see you in the next one somewhere here in central France.